this is Rob Ansbach, and welcome back to another edition of E-Heroes. For those keeping count, this is episode 293, and this whole episode is going to be passion-focused. And so I know a lot of entrepreneurs right now, they're struggling. They don't understand if, if they want to still be an entrepreneur because their passion levels have kind of subsided. They're not as excited as they once were when they started their business. And, you know, I've been doing this for, I've been an entrepreneur for almost 30 years. And so my passion level was probably out there. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, I, I, get you. I wake up every day thinking, you know, how can I help somebody? So I brought on someone who teaches passion every day. And, and you're going to see it in, in how she talks and how she she laughs about everything. And it's just it's exciting that, that she's here. So I want to welcome Ali Rodriguez and and. You know, this is great. I mean, just off air, you shared a lot of stuff. And, and you know, the one thing that you said right off the bat is, who is your business? Yes. And to me, a lot of people, a lot of people don't know what they're doing in business. Yeah. It, it's like, you know, they work for the business uh, and the business is, is you know, they, they lose their identity creating an entity mm -hmm. when the business is you, but you need to know who is your business. And to do that, you have to know yourself very, very well. Because in knowing yourself is how you know your audience. And knowing your audience is really everything. Yeah. It's, it's, it's no point, you know, uh, preaching to the choir, you know, or singing to the choir. You know, you, you gotta know. And this is why, who is your business? Really, I would love for everybody to answer that question and because it makes you reflect. And I do believe that reflection is needed every so often um, because it's almost like it's part of your life and you're giving, it, you're giving life life mm -hmm. when you reflect. Yeah. It's a very important thing to do. Just, just don't take things for granted and keep on moving because you think that if you stop, the train is going to leave. You know, I, I always thought I always thought my business was marketing, but really, in well, essence, my business is helping people share their stories. Oh, yeah. I know. I and, know. And, and so, yes, I use marketing and, and 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 we use social media and we use websites and SEO and all this other fancy stuff. But in reality, I'm helping other people share their stories and those stories help make them become the authority in what they do. Exactly. Yeah. But if they don't have passion, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, because then you're flatlining and, and, and you're trying to, it's like trying to push a train that doesn't need you because you don't have the strength to move it. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you have to have, that flame has to be within you. There are times that it may be opaque because you may be ill or then, you know, Life happens, but don't let it go out because it's always there. Mm -hmm. Once you focus <laughs> on your own passions and passions, because I know many people have many, many different passions, but they have it. They have the it. That's the it to the whole thing. And then it comes the pride. For me, pride in what you do. I don't care if you're cleaning toilets. You do it with pride. It is. You know, hey, you know my first, my first business. Well, my second business was a cleaning business and we cleaned toilets, we cleaned carpets, we cleaned sofas, we cleaned yeah. dog crap out of people's carpets. But the thing is, I did it with pride. And the thing I, is, is when I went into these homes, you know, I, I was pleasant. I was, I was purposeful. I, I, I had passion in what I was doing. And, and the thing is, many people don't want to do that. They don't want to clean up after somebody else. It's but there true. is money to be made when you do that. I know. <laughs> but but see, you did it with pride. I've seen so many people do things and, and, and do jobs that most people wouldn't want. But these people were so, first, they were happy about doing it, even if it was collecting dog crap, like you said. Uh, and, and they were so happy in doing it that their work, I mean, they, they were shining just by the proof of their work. They didn't have to say who they were and what they were all about. All you had to do is see what they were doing mm -hmm. and how well they did it. And they took pride. 
and they had a purpose. And what was their purpose? Perhaps it, perhaps it was to make a lot of money. Perhaps it was to feed their family. Perhaps it was to share their wealth around. And, and I know many people that are so community oriented that they, I mean, community is part of who they are. It's part of their essence. Mm -hmm. And and that's to me so important because we all belong. Yeah. Even when we feel we don't. Yeah. I mean, uh, you you said you're in Costa Rica right now, right? And, yeah. and I'm in Pennsylvania, but you know, when I went to Madrid, the the, the feeling of community there was just phenomenal. You know, and 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 they embraced tourism. It wasn't like you came there as a tourist. You came there as a family. As a, as a family, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I, for a while, on and off, I lived in the south of Spain. Costa del Sol, we're also everybody's family. And there you have a diversity of all kinds of countries because you're right on the coast, what, 10 miles from North Africa. Mm -hmm. So you get an influx from Nigeria. I mean, we, it, it's a real amazing community and everybody's community. Mm -hmm. it really is. And Madrid, it's that, that, that's, that's a story all by itself. It's just amazing. Uh, it really yeah, is. Like never go there in August because it's, no, no, it's so fried. Fried. <laughs> no, you, you fry, you fry. <laughs> That's why everybody leaves. Everybody's on vacation during August and mm -hmm. everybody goes down to the coast. Like it happens here in Costa Rica. We just had um, Holy Week. But the people in the capital, San Jose itself, it sits on a valley. So it's nowhere coastal. Mm -hmm. So what happens during Holy Week, everybody during that weekend that is in San Jose, they come to the coast, mostly here. I live in Playas del Coco, which is no more than 2,000 citizens to this little town. It used wow. to be a fishing village. And that's what I loved about it. it it's still almost a fishing village because people go out. I mean, you see the, the, the people that go out with their boats and they bring in all that fresh food and you know it's going to wind up on your table. Mm -hmm. and, and again, there you go passion, pride, and purpose in what they're doing. And then they have profits. People need to understand that you're in business to make money. Mm -hmm. And that, and, and then your relationship to your money has to be a good one. That money has to be your spouse, your, your lover, your best friend. You have to treat it with that respect as if it was a partner in your business, because it is. A partner in your life, because it is. Yeah. You know, my mom used to have a, a very strange saying, but she would say, no ticket, no laundry. Um, in Cuba, we used to have a lot of Chinese laundry mats. We come from the cleaning service. And uh, all tickets were written in Chinese. So mom would give the, you know, the clothes, blah, blah, blah. She gets a ticket. She had no idea what the hell it said. But when she went to pick it up, if she didn't have the ticket, that's what they would say. No ticket, no laundry. They wouldn't give the laundry. Mm -hmm. So, and the message was, get your shit together, girl. If you don't have it, you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to get anything. Mm -hmm. And that's where the expression, no ticket, no laundry came from. <laughs> because mm -hmm. you don't have it. You, And sometimes you don't have because you don't ask. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you, have, you really have, if you don't know how to ask, then learn how to ask. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the passion has become your superpower. I mean, when, when did you discover it? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Probably when I was two years old. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, it's so funny, but family always used to tell my mother behind my back, she's different. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Cubans are, you know, I, I was raised in Miami, so Florida has been my hometown. Mm -hmm. Forever, but I came from. I was born in Cuba, but came to the States very little. Uh, right at the onset, maybe two years after the Cuban Revolution, when we all realized it was communist. But, anyways, out I went. So, I was raised in, in Miami, but that's when all the Cuban influx. So, I was in between all kinds of different cultures, which I love it. And I think that's what makes me also so, so flexible. Because mm -hmm. I can be living in a palace or I can be living under under palm tree, which I have one outside my door. What the hell? You know, enjoy mm -hmm. it. Right. We have this moment. So enjoy it. And uh, so I, 
I was passionate forever, you know, <laughs> before I turned seven years old, which is like, you know, the time. Uh, for six months, my mother kept on saying, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I always wanted to be a doctor. And what you know, my clients now are doctors. Mm -hmm. so I didn't become a doctor, but I was the kid in the corner that used to have the stethoscope and checking all the kids out. So she said, no, no, I don't think that's for you. What else would you like to be? I love to write. A journalist. That's too dangerous. I mean, you could get killed. <laughs> And I love to entertain. So mom comes again with her third question. What would you really like to be? I said, mom, what else? A clown. <laughs> she said, let's rethink this whole thing about being a doctor. <laughs> so, and deep down, I think I'm all three. Mm -hmm. I love to entertain. And I think humor and entertain and entertainment is a fabulous way of informing and educating. Yeah. That, that's when I do my best coaching, when I can really interject. How many people come to you, to your sessions, and, and you know they're not, their level is really low? Yeah. Yeah, I, it's, I've said this before on, the, on this podcast that sarcasm is my superpower, and uh, I do it to, to break the monotony. I, I do it to make people laugh. And, and the more I can get them to laugh, the more they're going to remember who I am. And, and they're going to want to do business with me. You know, we do business with people we know, like, trust, but also feel safe with. Well, that's and, just it. Yeah. So, you know, they, people, they people want you. to feel safe knowing that if they're going to give you a lot of money, that you're going to do the work that you say that you're going to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you become the go-to person. Mm -hmm. They won't even think of anyone else. Right. I have so many people that... In fact, sometimes I do sessions locally for very few people. Most of my clients are in the States and in Spain and a few in UK. But here, you know, people pick up on my energy. I don't really, you know, I try to keep a low profile because I'm on fire most of the time. And I know that they don't get it. And that's fine. But all of a sudden, a person can walk into a restaurant and they can sense my presence and they want to know who's that person. Mm -hmm. They come and sit down and talk to me, and they start talking to me, and I'm saying, son of a gun. But the key is that they don't understand why they feel at home with me. Mm -hmm. And that's the safety issue. See, they feel safe mm -hmm. in talking to a perfect stranger. And they will they, they would say to me, I know with you I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And then they turn into clients. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I... And, and, you know, I, I'll be out at a theme park, I'll be out at a mall, and I'll just bump into people, and I'll, I'll listen to their conversation, or I'll say something to them, and my wife's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Sparking up a conversation. Yes. And, and uh, you know, I, I don't have a problem doing that. But, you know, there are a lot of people that are like, oh, don't talk to me. <laughs> it's like... No, no, I, I don't get that. I mean, I, I understand their emotional status, but to stay there, it's, it's, you know, we'll have our moments, really, where we need to have, you know, our space for a few minutes or hours. But to be that, you're pushing people away. See, I'm all about inclusivity. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. What? Come join us. Who cares? Hey. What? Whether we're having coffee, whether we're having a beer, whether we're having, I was going to say an orgy, but I'm not there yet. Uh, see what I mean? <laughs> Getting close, working on it. <laughs> That's a whole different podcast. <laughs> Is that a promise? <laughs> <laughs> But that's I'm the end. Taking of Costa Rica off my list now. <laughs> but that's that's the juiciness of life. See, so what is the purpose? What, what is the purpose of your business? Who is your business? It's part of your essence. It's what you put in it. It's it's the juiciness of how you enjoy it, mm -hmm. and how that business enjoys you back through the service that you provide your customers. Mm -hmm. To that feeling of I am safe with him, you're almost you become home to yeah. them internally, and that to me it's 
it, it doesn't have a price. It really, because it's your legacy also. And all these people have been present in your life to attest to the fact of who you were to them. Because we're different things to different people, as you know. Yeah. And, and I think that it's so valuable. And again, what do we bring to the table? And what is the purpose? Who is your business? It has to have a purpose. It has to have meaning. It has to have value. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, again, because I use humor as a way of informing and educating, but why? Mm -hmm. And my why is I want to impact whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I want to bring love to impact to mm -hmm. elevate and to empower myself as I do others. Mm -hmm. Because we, we all stand in the service of others as we stand in the service of our own destiny. Right. So let's design it and let us not by default, but by design. You know, two of the two of the words that I live by are, are freedom and legacy and freedom to do what I want, when I want, how I want. And for the benefit of whom I want and and legacy, what I'm leaving behind for the next generation. But, you know, you mentioned something off air, which really has now got my brain thinking is the term living document. And, yes. and you know, you have become this 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 beacon for entrepreneurs of being a living document. And and so if, if I, I know we have some time, um, can you explain what that is? Yes, <laughs> yes, it, it, it's a fusion of energy, it's a fusion of love, it's a fusion of kindness, it's a fusion of emotions with results that are for the betterment of the world at a global scale. I touch you, you may touch somebody else that will touch somebody else in, you know, in, in Nigeria, that will touch somebody else who's in you in the south of France that will touch somebody else. And I'm talking about the knowledge that they receive because knowledge, when you apply it, it's wisdom. Mm -hmm. And what better than to leave the wisdom behind? That's the living document, wisdom. And, and I think everybody, every entrepreneur out there, in fact, every, everybody in the world should, should live the life of, of being a, a living document. Yes. You know, you know, that they have that power to influence the next person. And that person takes that information to all over the world. That is, you know, that is my, my aim. And it has been evolving. Um, because sometimes we think so locally, especially a person like me, I'm so community oriented. And I really immerse myself in the community because that's my immediate world. And I know my community is very diverse. So their immediate world, it could be Canada, it could be China, it could be, you know. So having that, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm okay with this locality because I know the people are gonna take it to other places. And I started working with a client that used to live here about two years ago. No, I'm sorry, four years ago. And he owned, um, a, a, he owned a coffee shop that was, you know, like the it to go to. And then he he sold it and went to travel the world for about a year. And now he's in LA. He calls me. We, we have our meeting face to face. He drags me. He, he, he sends me that I need you. Let's come meet. And so I go there for a couple of weeks. I work with him. He's growing. He's bringing more people in. And I said to myself, my God, we're creating a world movement because we're all thinking the same thing. In his business, what is his essence? The coffee. You can sit down over a cup of coffee and create a business plan. You can, you can create you know, a, a new world movement for the betterment of everybody included. I understand now we have like 13 million people in this little planet. You know, so, and so we started something that is called the world movement. Mm. And That's I am powerful. like, you know, the matriarch of, of the whole movement. And as we put it together, people will come to me for, you know, what do I do with this? What do I do with that? A part of what I will do will be one-on-one -on -one coaching to people that join the movement. Three years ago, little did I know that with my local community mentality, I was going to be doing what I'm doing today, reaching out 
and and grab people still fit me without knowing me mm -hmm. they either come to me and they say i know you or they come to me who are you mm -hmm. you know and i'm going uh -huh. <laughs> now that i have you here let me tell you so it, it's a tremendous um responsibility but i am so proud to be able to take it on and say yes you know, I, I watched a lot of your videos too, and 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 you have all this energy. You have, you know, you're you're just the the message is always on point, and and it, it's just incredible because you know I, I I see people, you know, even younger generation, they're getting into business and they have no clue what they're doing. They they don't have a direction. They have no energy. They have no passion. They just think, oh, the world's going to come to me and give me money. It's not how it works. <laughs> it's just that it's funny that they think they did how it works. Um, you know, I, I've, been then, this, I've been an entrepreneur for 30 years and, you know, it took a long time for people to know who yeah, I was. You know, oh, she was a success overnight. Yeah, after 10 years. <laughs> doing the same thing and and interjecting the love that you have in your heart because you gotta love what you're doing really to to, to keep up with that passion the passion is the flame yeah. but the love is you know is what keeps it lit up hey you know if if i didn't have passion or purpose yeah these podcasts would never happen i would never get to 293 episodes i would have never produced 43 books yeah you know you got to be able, and, and books take time to produce. They're not an instant money maker. And, and you know, oh, by say, any means. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll say, oh, Rob, aren't you like a millionaire like J.K. Rowling? No. <laughs> <laughs> Business books do not make a lot of money. Yeah. But what they do is they allow you to become an authority in what you do. People exactly. will come to you and say, hey, Rob, can you speak on stage? Can you come here and do this and do that? And, can I hire you to help us? They are your overglorified business card that allows people to get to know who you are. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they recognize you as the as the expert in your in your field, yeah. which is this is why I said before you become the go to person for what they're looking for. And the other thing is that once they really there are people who are highly highly psychic they, they really have that sixth sense they can just look at you and they know mm -hmm. they, they it's almost like when you fall in love and you know she's the one mm -hmm. but you of course when you fall in love you don't the sixth sense does nothing <laughs> it's just like <laughs> but the people who has that sixth sense and has it so developed they know immediately this is mm -hmm. my God. This is the one I want to go to. And then they have that kind of trust that you don't even have to work for because they already know. Yeah. They have a knowingness about you. Sometimes yeah. it can get a little scary, but nonetheless. Um, uh, and, and, and it goes for clients too, because once you become in tune for who you are, what you want to do, and, 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 and who your business really is devoted to, those clients that come to you, come to you because they want to be part of that. And, yes, they don't want to miss and out. Those, and those transactions become easier. You know, yeah. but when you're trying to force that relationship with a, a client, sometimes you just got to say no. It's it's not going to work out. <clears throat> and I know that you need the money. You know, there there are clients out there that Rob they'll say Rob it's just been a crappy year. I'm just going to take any client that comes to me. And that's the worst mentality to have because they're going to, my favorite saying is the, the, the cheaper the client, the more hassles involved. That and is true. They will make your life a living hell. So try to make sure that what you're doing is so in tune with others that they come to you freely. Exactly. Exactly. That that's, that's why when you, when you're into your own essence and you let it out, People sense it. Those that have that certain thing, they sense it and they find you. And it's very true when you get clients because you're desperate, you get more desperate clients. Mm -hmm. and, and then at the end, no matter how much you've done for them, it's never enough. And they expect more out of you 
than you know a regular playing paying client that really really appreciates and values you. Mm -hmm. And to have a client that does not value you, that I close the door immediately. I, yeah. like, I mean, there people say, oh, second chances. No, no, no and, and, they, they and get out of second chances. That that's. You know, even if I take them on as a client because I feel that maybe they they uh, could use my service, the moment they're mean to my my employees, my teammates, my contractors, I get rid of them because they need to show the same respect to me as they do my my people. And I've had way too many. You know, they'll say, "Well, I have a question," and I say, "Okay, well, I can't answer that. Let me give you to my teammate." And then they start yelling at my teammate, like, "Oh, no, you're fired." Yep. Yeah. No. no, I. Oh, I know what you're saying. Yeah. No, um, that, that's, that's a big no. No, there's got to be respect all the way around. Otherwise, yeah, out the door. Because see, they don't see the value. They already. They, they, as far as I'm concerned, there's no purgatory. They're already in hell. Yeah. So close the door. You know, I used to give. You know. The way I was raised is second chances was a big deal. You know, give second chances until one day I, I realized what it really meant. And that's not a healthy thing. That really is not. No. There could be circumstances where maybe you have no choice but to give a second chance. But as long as you have the choice, give a second chance to yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you may want to think about the other people that you may want to give it to. But always put yourself first. It's another thing. And, and, and to me, life is, a, I mean, everything that we do, even our business, is, is, is a reflection of our lifestyle. I mean, look at the colors I have on. I have pink and yellow, and, and, and then I have more pink and more pink. So, yes, I'm a pink lady. What can I tell you? But I love all kinds of colors because I am colorful. That's my personality, you know? Mm -hmm. So reflect who you are, too because it's in your veins. And again, you're constantly, we're all energy and we're constantly reflecting, reflecting, reflecting. And that's what's going to attract. Yeah, I'm, I'm very colorful energy. too, can't you tell? Yeah, oh, you're completely so colorful. I mean, just, you have the color. Just blue on my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you, you have the color that exists because you know that black is a color, white is non-existent. But I, I, and I do, I, I, I dress, I pull things off that you won't believe. And people say, you look so beautiful. I don't know how you make this match, but it matches for me. Mm -hmm. Somebody else wears it and they look like shit. But, you know, it's, again, be who you are, express yourself. Another thing, find your platform. We all need to have a platform where we can be heard. If we have a message, find that platform. It could be a coffee shop. It could be a library. It could be the Chamber of Commerce where you can maybe rent a room, you know, a conference room once a month, give a chat for free to business people. I mean, Chamber of Commerce can be extremely helpful if you know how to use them. Mm -hmm. And But find a platform for your voice because your message is important. Mm -hmm. No matter how big, no matter how small, don't even judge it. You have a song in your heart, go sing it. Mm -hmm. You have a message, go give it. Do not hide. When you hide because you're frightened, you get small. Mm -hmm. But when you realize that hiding is not helping because they're going to find you anyways, and you have the guts, you have the courage to say, I'm going to do it anyways, mm -hmm. then that's freedom. Because all of a sudden, you removed all the shackles that were making you small. Mm -hmm. Pushing you back and making you small. And then people don't hear your message. Right. And someone needs to hear what you have to say. Because you have something important to say. Something important to give. And mm -hmm. something important for people to remember you by. Right. And where, that's where, where can people learn more about you? Where? Um, it's so simple. AliRodriguez.com. And, and, and what can they discover? Oh, my God. What will they discover? They will discover what it's all about 
Um, I'm, a, I'm about growth. I'm about expansion. Not everybody is at the at that point in their lives, mm -hmm. but you cannot get stale. You have to keep on moving, you, just like the sharks do. You know, they never sleep because they die. So, to to feel the passion, you need to be alive, kind of, right? <laughs> And uh, so it's very important that if you're into growth, you're into expansion, you're into uh, being more of what you want to be and you want to know how to do it, where to do it, how to even approach people. I, I love working with doctors, young doctors that are in private practice. That really is my target audience, not the ones that go to work for hospitals or you know big practices. They are my ideal clients. Most of them are between 28 to 32, a startup, and most of them have the funds to really get it going because like the movie, Show Me the Money, it's, you want to do what again? Okay, like this client I was telling you about, all the dreams and everything, and I'm going to LA the 16th of this month. And the thing of it is, okay, it's gonna cost us blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Show me the money. Okay, this is how much I got. This is how much I got. Said, okay, get yourself, even if it's a part-time job, to support you for another year and a half because it's going to take that long. Mm -hmm. But see, the vision is there. Now the money is there and it continues to be. And now he can bring more people in to be part of this global movement. Mm -hmm. And it becomes easier. Yeah. But to make the awareness of how important it is of having the funds to support your dream and to create a lifestyle to match you. You create a business around your lifestyle, not your lifestyle around the business because right. then you become an employee. You're not the boss. Right. You know, and, and passion breeds passion. So, you know, you're, you're going into these businesses with this full passion and, and you're blessing them with your passion. <clears throat> and then they take, they're taking that and then they're just, you know, creating a business filled with more passion. And, and yes. so, you know, you cannot, for me, it's, it's, you cannot hire a coach that, and, 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 and you don't expect them. If, if they're not passionate, you're not going to get much out of it because to me, it's, it's, I don't know. I, I to me, I, I have to have someone that that's going to push me. That's going to show me all these different things that, that, yeah, I didn't know were possible. I know. It, that's just it. So many people come to me, and I'm sure it's happened to you. You mean to tell me I can do that? And I said, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that, yes, you can do it, but yes, you can do it because you had it inside you all along. Mm -hmm. See? So I focus a lot on the strength of the person. You see? And, and another thing that passion creates for other people, creativity. There are a lot of creators out, out there that they have been flatlining for whatever reason, you know? And all of a sudden you're dealing with a coach or you're dealing with a, a person who's full of passion. They remember because passion also breeds creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you come up with crazy ideas. Yeah. And you say, oh man, that's really off the wall there. I mean, you know, what, what amazes me is I go on a social media and I, I create content every day for my clients. And then I get these young people who think that they're social media gurus and they, they're <laughs> posting on there like, oh, give me ideas. I've run out of ideas to, to write content. And I'm thinking, I've been creating content for 30 years, people. What's wrong with you? What? There's content all around you. Yes. If you yes. just know where to look, you know, and you know, people ask me if I ever get writer's block. 43 books. No, never had writer's block. Just, there's so much to write about. There's so much to create. Well, see, passion breeds creativity. Mm -hmm. if, if that flame wasn't there, you know, it takes longer to even realize what, what it is that you want to create. But it's inside you. I mean, there are people that, that are not creative at all. But they're good at other things, like maybe observing. They, they can become the best detective just by observing. They're great mm -hmm. observers. It's a passive action, but nonetheless, it collects information. So to me, that's a way of creativity, while others are very proactive in learning. 
learning is a very active action because when you learn, when you study, you learn. And when you learn, if you apply the knowledge, you get, you get wise. Mm -hmm. The end result is wisdom to be shared because if you don't share it, it doesn't mean anything either. But it's to me that wisdom that you can share with others and wisdom can come like this fellow I'm working with in LA. It's only 31. I'm talking about young. So for me to have the pleasure and the, and the honor to be working with a younger, with a much younger generation, the youngest in the group is 26. Wow. Yeah, and the oldest, he's, he feels really old now in comparison to the rest, is 35. So. Yeah, that's old. Yeah, that's all. And they're all guys, but they're all so focused. They're all so talented in different ways, completely, mm -hmm. completely different from each other. And yet they come together. Why? Because they have the same purpose mm -hmm. and also the same passion. It's played in different ways, but this global movement is just really is going to be impacting. And we're creating communities in different places too, like in, in Portugal, for example, Spain is already being established. I mean, it, it's, it sounds so crazy. And that's the beauty of the passion that it ignites creativity. All of a sudden, what you thought that, what, that can happen? I can actually do that? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. It's right there because you love what you do and you're in the service of loving what you do for those who love what you do as well. Yeah, and and you know this this like I said this podcast would have never been or have never gotten this far if I didn't love what I do if I didn't want to share these awesome guests like you with the world because to me it's it's this is my way of giving back and you know I I, I want the next generation to understand that it takes time to build a business you have to have passion you have to have you know higher prices because you want to be able to take vacations and do all kinds of other stuff. And, and you don't want to be a slave to your own business that you create. Exactly. So. Exactly. I actually do fashion plans for, for people because many of them said, you know, but I really, you know, I'm not a passionate person or I'm not, you know, I don't know what my passion is. And I start creating a plan, you know, with different bullet points and questions for them to ask. And it's very, um, tailored made. It's not one size fits all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also they will say, I remember. Oh my God, I remember. I was four years old, and my mom used to tell me this. And, like, and then they remember how they were rebellious against it. And it was behind that rebellion that there was a passion. There was that thing that was hiding in there, but it was there. Yeah. And it wasn't so much to rebel against something, but to be or something oh, and, and 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 when we can channel some of that inner child you know when when i was a, a child i was fearless i would do anything and it wasn't the fact that i i, I knew you know what could kill me or what couldn't kill me. i just i just you know did stuff and I, and I, and as i got older i'm like fear i don't like heights i don't like this and it's like what happened you know, <laughs> so I, I think that we need to channel sometimes that inner child because we're the not afraid to do stuff. Yes. Yes. The energy is it's amazing. And it, it's that's why it's important to identify, you know, the different things that we're all about. Mm -hmm. You know, even those people that may be shy. I mean, I've worked with very introverted and shy is different, but they've been both. And I turned one of them into a public speaker. Mm -hmm. And now they pay her. And she's a doctor. Um, but she never saw herself speaking to an audience. Wow. And and now she is. And she travels, you know, through the United States. And people pay her to hear her story. And one of her story is that at a very young age, she tried to commit suicide. And now she speaks to doctors, especially during the pandemic. We lost so many doctors to suicide mm -hmm. that she actually goes on tours to talk to doctors as to what to do when it, first, how normal it, it is to feel that way and to what to do about it. Mm -hmm. So I am so, so proud of her 
Had I not been there, she would have never. This is another thing of what I do working with doctors. My focus is not so much on the doctor, but on the patient. Mm -hmm. I will never get to know those patients. But to me, a better doctor is going to produce better patient care, no matter what. Right. So I, that's why I like working with them when they're still off of school after the internship, because they're still fresh and still have that passion in them. But I want them to be better than what they already are, because right. it's the patient yeah. who's going to really receive the benefits. Right. And, and I've noticed that that doctors that have passion for what they do not only have a better uh, practice, they have more clients, they they get better referrals and they stay in business longer. But those and they, that, and they have the same staff, very loyal staff. Yeah. But the the ones that don't, they don't stay no. they don't stay a doctor too long. No, they don't. Or they have to join a, a big practice that has right. 14 doctors and he or she will be just another one, another add on. You know, I, and you have to see at least 30 patients a day, which that means about five and a half minutes per patient. That's not enough. What? You're going to write a script and say, hi, how are you? I, oh, I mean, your blood pressure is okay. When, you know, it's probably right. 160 over 100. That's not okay. But, you know, uh, no, I, I have seen transcripts because I read transcripts as well. And I said, my God, these this people really didn't, didn't take the blood pressure. And if they did, they would have known that this patient is not okay. You know, but the, again, go with what fits you. Mm-hmm. And, and those that are meant for you will show up. And you have to have that faith. Yeah. Uh, not hope. I'm not a friend of hope. <laughs> because I, well, I know this may sound funny uh, for those who are Christians and believe in the three virtues, uh, faith, hope, and charity. I'm a fan of faith, mm-hmm. but hope, I think she's the liar of the family. <laughs> well, she always tells you, oh, no, don't worry, mañana, you know, tomorrow, yeah. everything. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. yeah. So. That's why I wake say, up tomorrow. I'm gonna have the same problems. Come on. Yeah, That's... but there's something about you know when they tell you, yeah, tomorrow will take care of itself. Um, yeah, right. That's hope. You see. So, <laughs> I come from a very strong Catholic background. So having this conversation with the nuns that I was raised with, practically, and other priests, is like you know they go like this and they see me coming. Hey, I, 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 I went to Catholic school. I know. <laughs> also, you know. <laughs> Talking, talking about singing to the choir. So, you mm-hmm. know, they see me come in and I have, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not shy about telling them. No, you know, and, say, but you're talking but, to you know, the superior. sad thing is, is that a lot of the nuns stopped teaching, at least around here. You know, yeah. maybe they went down to Costa Rica. <laughs> <It was warmer. laughs> but, yeah, they, a lot of the Catholic schools around here just don't have nuns anymore. Well, I, I grew up with them. I still have some of the old timers that are now retired and living in Miami. Um, and actually, I, I love doing spiritual retreats at least twice a year. When I was in Florida, I had, they were about five, five hours away by car. So I, and they, I was the only non-religious person that they would, would allow to actually do the retreat with the nuns. So to me, that was such a treat. Imagine having the person like me, but I grew up with them. They knew me, you know, but they would invite me. So being in that kind of religious environment and then then they knowing that I didn't believe in hope, it, it was it was a it was a trip. But it was also a trip to be able to to honor the silence. Mm-hmm. And in the form upon which they all kept silence for so many hours or for so many days. And what did we learn from it? And what did we learn from each other? And how did we connect to self first mm-hmm. and our source of love? Forget all of this religious and all the other stuff. And to me, that was a need. That I, and to this day, I, it's something that I still need to connect to that. And I don't have them here. This is not really a Catholic country. It's a religious country, Mm -hmm. mostly evangelist. So what I do is I create my own retreats. Mm -hmm. 
I invite people to spend a couple of days. I don't know. I you know I will rent a house up in the mountains or something. I will leave the retreat because hey, I learned from the nun. Okay, so you know how to do it. But it's a need, and just to have that silence, and then to have the communication because there is communication in silence. Mm -hmm. We can look at each other or not. We look away, but we know. And then what happens is that the the energies, you know, the energetic fields in all of us keep on racing. And by the time we all get together and we actually open up the circle to what did we learn, what did we exchange, it is magic. It, it is like mind blowing. And it continues. And that's the fun of it. It stays with you. And we do more of it, you know. So energy is, is something, but silence is golden, as they say, as the song says. So I had no idea you came from a Catholic school. <laughs> But, but you know what I'm talking about, see? Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I don't know, life is precious, life is juicy, life is to be enjoyed, life is laughter. I'm convinced that God collects more laughter than tears. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced of that. And that's our heaven, right here. So everyone, if you want to experience more passion in your life and, and maybe even uh, go to um, one of Ali's retreats, just go to uh, AliRodriguez.com yeah. and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Adios. Yes. All right. <laughs>